Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri people, uh, recognise that sovereignty was never ceded and this land always was and always will be Wurundjeri land. I'd also like to acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues here tonight. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, the Banyol councillors in the room, there's a few of you, and your numbers are growing, I notice. There's a few more coming in. Uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge the Greens candidate for Ivanhoe, Andrew Connolly, uh, there in the back row. Thank you also for coming along this evening. Mostly, thank all of you for coming along, the community that's come here tonight, and thank you to the MTF for organising this forum. Uh, the MTF have been tireless campaigners for public transport on behalf of local government because they understand how critical it is in terms of underpinning the, the livability and the social fabric of communities. So I thank you for all of your efforts too uh, in relation to holding this range of forums. Uh, I've got to say this one's my second out of three, so, so hopefully I'll go all right tonight. Uh, Banyol, of course, like the rest of Melbourne's northeast, is struggling under the amount of traffic on our roads during the morning and afternoon peak. We know from the most recent census that two thirds of people in Banyol get to work by car. 16.7% of you use public transport, which is above the average for Melbourne. Uh, so I'd say that you are admirably committed to using public transport in Banyol, despite the delays, despite the inconvenience of packed trains, uh, and those interminably late buses that are often so packed they bypass your bus stop uh, or we see them broken down often uh, on the roadside as well. In terms of uh, the response to these statistics is that uh, from the other parties is that they're immutable, that we can't change that fraction. Therefore, we must build more toll roads. However, the Greens do not want this election to be the battle of who's got the biggest toll road, because we don't have a toll road. We think there's a far better solution to getting people around our communities. We know that toll roads won't fix the problem, as building more roads encourages more people to drive more often. It's been proven by scientific research. It even has a name. It's called the law of induced demand. New road space is filled by newly generated traffic within a couple of years of a new toll road being open. That's why travel times on CityLink are as slow as before, they, before CityLink was open. It's been proven time and time again in city after city. It's worth looking at it. Essentially, it works like this. Build more roads, get more traffic. The only way to reduce congestion on our road network is to invest in public transport and active transport to give people alternatives to driving their cars. Now, the Greens are currently in the process of developing some comprehensive plans to shift some of the people from cars to public transport to take the pressure off our road network and leave that road space for those who have no choice to drive, including delivery vans and tradies. When you look at the traffic statistics, we know that 92% uh, of those uh, vehicle movements on our roads are private motor vehicles. So for us, it's about giving people opportunities to get out of their private motor vehicles and get on to public transport. We need to have more frequent train services, a proper bus network that people want to use, and better pedestrian and cycling infrastructure so people can walk or cycle to the station and other neighbourhood destinations. In terms of trains and buses, it's great to see the recently duplicated, uh, that, um, the recently completed duplication to Rosanna Station because it means there's more capacity for services to Greensboro. However, what we haven't seen is a commensurate <coughs> increase in feeder bus services to meet those trains and such that there is still a battle for the car park at the station. Uh, and indeed, we'd say the largest failure uh, of the government is the l failure to invest in new bus services into the middle and outer suburbs of <coughs> Melbourne. That's why we're in the process of developing a new approach to buses, particularly in eastern metropolitan, to alleviate traffic and roads. Uh, so much of our traffic in eastern metropolitan is orbital, uh, headed to universities, hospitals, activity, activity centres across the north-south of this electorate. Uh, and in looking at that, we, we notice that there's a, a number of patterns that people are undertaking in terms of their movement. So we're looking uh, to develop uh, a bus service that responds to that, linking those really important areas that are simply uh, in and around the eastern metropolitan region. And when I talk about those, I'm talking about places 
like La Trobe University, uh, the hospitals, uh, core railway stations, uh, interchanges with activity centres. It's important that they're linked by a bus network that is actually a rapid service, not necessarily the service that you have now. Uh, and the other thing that really struck us when we started to look at traffic movements around uh, Eastern Metropolitan was the missing local link, link between La Trobe University and Eltham uh, that, that simply isn't there at the moment. So it's about getting the frequency right uh, in terms of a, a bus network, along with things that haven't been contemplated maybe before, which is free Wi-Fi and device charging, so you can have a high quality ride to entice people out of their cars. Uh, We'd also be looking at um, electric buses because uh, they're a much cleaner, quieter drive. Uh, they're great for commuters. They're also great for communities because they, in fact, uh, have far less um, particulates in, in the air, so they're much healthier um, from an air pollution point of view, but also from a noise point of view as well. And I don't know if any of you have used electric buses in other um, countries, uh, they're, they're, they're quite a ride, they're quite different to what we experience here in Melbourne and it would be great to see that as part of our, our bus service. We need to make sure that for shorter trips uh, people have the right infrastructure to, to walk or cycle where they want to do. We're disappointed that the government hasn't recognised the potential of active transport. There's certainly a pot of money there for cycling and pedestrian infrastructure. Uh, but uh, there's only two projects that have ever really received funding from that. None of them are anywhere near Banyol. Uh, in terms of the investment in per capita cycling and pedestrian infrastructure for the year, uh, ours is very low. Jeez, that time goes fast. Every time it goes fast. Cities like London and Copenhagen are spending $30 per capita a year on cycling, and we really need to drive the uh, per capita spent on cycling because it is a great way to get around your community and get where you need to go. In terms of cycling, uh, never we the Greens are constantly uh, the great supporters of cycling. I in fact introduced our minimum passing distance bill in this term of Parliament. Uh, I was delighted to see that it passed the upper house. Uh, sadly, when it got to the lower house, it died a very sudden death. It continues to frustrate the Greens that we don't have minimum passing laws for cyclists. It would certainly do a lot in terms of making some of those most vulnerable road users safer. Uh, with that, uh, I'm sure I'll get lots of questions on the North East Link and other transport options, and I'll leave it there.